Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel where we speak about um, faith, health and nutrition and your overall wellness and today I'm going to be sharing a faith based video which is a continuation from a previous video where I speak about my journey back to God and I do believe that this video is going to help uplift and edify who it is meant for and without any further ado let's get right into it. So on this video, I am going to be sharing with you what is required of you when you are coming back to God based on my experience and it is going to be obviously backed up by scripture. The first important thing you need to know which is a requirement when coming back to God, is repentance and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repentance is when you turn from your ways and begin to live the life God has called you to live according to his standards. The Bible says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn from their ways and pray, then I will hear them from heaven and I will answer. So for God to answer your, your prayers, you need to turn from your ways. You need to repent and start living the life God wants for you. And the life you want is not according to your standards or what you think is the right way to live. It is in accordance to his standards, how he wants you to live, not how you want yourself to live then you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are praying to God, then you need to, to accept Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the way. If you are praying to the God of the Bible, the creator of the heaven and the earth, then the only way to the God of the Bible, the creator of the heaven and earth, is Jesus Christ. The Bible says no one can go to the Father except through Jesus Christ. So for you to go to the Father, you need to go through Jesus Christ and you need to accept him into your life as your Lord and Savior. And this is according to Romans 10 verse 9 and 10 and I'm going to read it and I'm going to put it on the screen. Romans 10 verse 9 and says, for if you publicly declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and exercise faith in your heart that God raised him up from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, for with your heart, for with the heart one exercises faith for righteousness, but with the mouth one makes public declaration for salvation. So you need to publicly declare it, confess it with your mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead. And that is accepting Jesus Christ. I'm going to link the salvation prayer at the end of this video so that if you want to publicly and boldly accept Jesus Christ, you can do it. The next thing you need to know that is a requirement when you are coming back to God is that you need to lay down your life for him. According to Galatians 2 verse 20 that says, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. So it's no longer about you, about what you want. It's about Christ, his kingdom. What does he want for you? What does he want from you? How can he use you? How can you benefit the kingdom of God? And that's you laying down your life to take up the life of Christ. No longer you, but Christ. There's a song that says, no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me, for I've been born again. Meaning now you have a new life. That is the life in Christ. And that is a requirement to lay down your life, to take on the life of Christ. The next thing you need to note, which is a requirement or what is required from you when you come back to God is that you need to make up your mind to live right. And then you need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And this is according to Romans 12. Uh, verse 1 and 2 which says I beseech you therefore brethren that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and accept your God to God which is your reasonable 
service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so renewal comes when you read the word and the reading of the word comes when you make up your mind to read the word so it will not just come and when you read the word you ask the holy spirit to help you because the holy spirit is our helper because the bible says that jesus christ didn't leave us alone he left us with the helper so you ask the holy spirit to help you you understand so you decide to live right by the help of the holy spirit and you choose not to be conformed to this world living right means you're no longer conformed to the patterns of this world but now you are living a life that god has for you or the life that god designed for you the next thing you need to note is that in the early days of your coming back to god you need to commit yourself to vigorous amounts of prayer fasting and reading the word you need to stay in prayer you need to read the word persistently and you need to fast and you need to fast sometimes you will fast as you are led sometimes it will just be a decision and sometimes it's just going to be an instruction you may find out that you you were doing a seven day fast and immediately after the fast when you think that now you are not going to fast the holy spirit is going to say carry on fasting so it's going to be consistent amounts of being in the presence of God, being in the secret place, because that is the time when you are becoming molded, shaken, broken, and being rebuilt for the glory of God and according to how God had initially designed you. And you're going to take up the character of the person that you were meant to be before you fell or before you were broken. The Bible says when you pray, go into the secret place and pray to your father who is in secret. So in these times when you are like in prayer, intense amounts of prayer, fasting and reading the word, this is the time to pray, to know God for yourself. This is the time to pray. To, to, to read the word, to understand God through his word, to understand what God's purpose is for your life according to your word. This is the times when you are fasting, fasting to know God, fasting to get closer to God, not fasting to ask for something from him. But these are the moments when you'll be investing your time, investing yourself and spending your, your, your time in the presence of God. To know God, to seek God, and you will definitely find Him. In these times, you don't ask God for what you need materialistically. You ask God for what you need spiritually. You need to you need to find God in this prayer time. You need to know God when you are reading the Word in these times, and you need to encounter God in these kinds of fastings. The next thing you need to note about coming back to God is that you are going to be isolated you're going to go through a lot of isolation and sometimes it's going to come naturally and sometimes it's just going to be you spending time with god with me it started when i realized that the person i was becoming could no longer fit into the patterns of the world or how things were done in the world so i began to draw back and pull back bit by bit because i was like i needed to really be in a space where i felt comfortable with what god was doing in my life so i pulled back i isolated myself i remember one time my friend says you and withdrawing like jesus christ and she could tell that i was isolating myself a lot i was withdrawing from a lot of things in order to spend time with god so you're going to be isolated when you look into the bible especially with ezekiel's case every time god wanted to speak to ezekiel every time god wanted to use ezekiel god isolated ezekiel and spoke to him or rather dealt with him in the measure that you wanted so when god wants to speak to you when god wants to use you as a mouthpiece he takes you to a position or a place where it's just you and him and nobody else no noise when god speaks it's only going to be you and him so a place of isolation is also a place of being molded learning to hear the voice of god correctly and learning to trust god 
because it's just you and him and nobody else. It's a place where you will grow uncomfortable, uncomfortably, but yet you will go to love the place of isolation because there is no stress there. It's completely peaceful and you always want to stay there. I realized that I could spend over six hours in the presence of God and when I come out, I will just come out so fulfilled. That's the kind of isolation I'm speaking about. He will isolate you from the world, from social media, from everything. It's just going to be you and He. The next important thing that you need to note about coming back to God, which is one of the most difficult is obedience you need to master the art of obedience even when it doesn't make sense the things of god will never make sense to anybody even to yourself you need only to obey for me obedience is a form of faith it's a form of trust in god the obedience i'm talking about is very abnormal So when I say you need to know that obedience is required of you, I mean you need to obey even when the things don't make sense to you. For example, God will give you you an instruction or you will will be led to do something or you will say something to you that doesn't make sense. The Holy Spirit will speak and you will be like, this doesn't make sense. If I'm going to do this, people are going to think I'm crazy. And you're going to do it. And it's going to look crazy, but it's going to come to pass. God is going to, the Holy Spirit may speak something to you and if you refuse to do it, he will impress it on you until you hear that, no man, you need to do this. You know, with God, it's his way or no way. There is no my way. There is no our way. God is all knowing. So when he tells you to do something, he is not leading you into a trip or he's not leading you into a place where you're going to be harmed or pain. Sometimes it's going to be painful, but the pain comes because it's not normal to the human flesh or to the human nature. It's spiritual. So when you walk in obedience, you need to understand that you need to be dead in, in the flesh. That is why I mentioned that you need to lay down his life and let Christ live in you so that the things that don't make sense to the human nature or the human eye or the human ear will make sense to you because now you are walking in the spirit man nature. So your obedience to God will not make sense. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. The next thing we need to note when coming back to God is we need to have faith. For a long time, I used to think that I must have faith because I'm Brenda. I must have faith. I must have faith as little as a mustard seed. Until I read Hebrews 12 verse 2, which says, Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Okay. This means that Jesus Christ has written the kind of faith we should have. Jesus Christ has perfected the kind of faith we need to have. So there is no other kind of faith we should have except the faith that Jesus Christ has written in his life here on earth and perfected by dying on the cross. So when the Bible says have faith, if you have faith like a mustard seed, it means that if you have the faith of Jesus that is as tiny as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Not the faith you have as a person. No, the faith you have of Jesus. So it's not the faith Brenda has. It's the faith of Jesus that Brenda has. Not mine alone. Because my faith will die out. Trust me, it has died out. Until I understood that I need the faith that Jesus had. The faith of Jesus. That is when some of the things started becoming very easy because now I have the faith of the one who wrought the kind of faith I should have and perfected the kind of faith I should have. And the next thing you need to note is that you need to cut some people in your life by the help of the Holy Spirit. And you need to have the grace or the understanding to keep people in your life. That's if God wants you to keep anybody in this journey. Because not everybody is going to walk this journey with you. It is a personal journey that you have to walk alone. 
salvation is personal that is why you are the one making up your mind not you and your friend not you and your husband not you and your family not you and your boyfriend not you and your siblings not you and your uncle it's you as an individual making the decision to come back to god to seek him for who he really is salvation is personal and you need to work it out with fear and trembling the race is run by many people but it is your race nobody is going to run it for you that is why you need to understand that you're not going to be able to run with a lot of people you might be ahead of them you might be behind them but this is your race not anybody else's race is not going to be the same as mine not going to be the same as yours so you need to ask the holy spirit to help you in every single thing that you do the next thing you need to note is that you need to love god and you need to love others you need to love god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and you need to love god not for what he will give you you need to love him for who he is this means that even if he doesn't give you anything you still love him because you don't want anything from him but you want him you know when you come back to god you get to a point where you realize that god is enough because life is just too difficult and the moment you have god you feel content about a lot of things you no longer want but you are in a place of being content about everything whether you have or whether you don't have you learn to be content and you learn to love god in every situation so it's no longer about what he gives you it's about loving god for who he is and then you need to love others as well the bible says love your neighbor as you love yourself which is the first which is the greatest commandment sorry meaning that you need to learn to love others it is not easy to love others that is why i believe we are tasked to do it because we are all flawed we have our own the we've got ways of doing things that may not be conducive for others but we are encouraged to love others whether it feels like it or not we are encouraged to love one another because love is important we cannot learn to forgive without love we cannot learn to give without love we cannot learn to be compassionate without love so we need to love others and we also need to love god so we need to have love we need to be full of love and you need to ask the holy spirit to help you because there was a point in my life where i didn't know how to love god i couldn't confess my love for him but today i can boldly say i love god not for what he has given me not for what he has promised to give me but i love him for loving me i love god for who he is for being the creator of heaven and earth for sending his only son to die for me when i didn't even know i needed saving i love god because he is so merciful and he is good even though i don't understand his way sometimes i understand that there is a father who loves me and i am really grateful for that and I cannot bear but to re- reciprocate the love that I get from God and also give it to others. And the next thing to note is that um you need to be ready to send out to be used for his glory which is our great commission. And this is according to Matthew 28 and I'm going to read from this 18. It says Jesus approached and spoke to them saying all authority has been given me in heaven and on earth so there's authority that has been given to us already and it says go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit teaching them to observe all things i have commanded you and look i am with you and all the days until the conclusion of the system of things we have been commissioned to go out and make disciples of all nations that is the great commission to be used for the glory of god to be used for the kingdom of god to bring more souls that is what we have been commissioned to do above anything and everything you need to know that the greatest thing that we have been called to do or commissioned to do is to make disciples of all nations teaching them to observe all the things that god that Jesus Christ has commanded while he was here on earth. So when you come back to God, you need to be willing to be used. 
and you need to understand that being used comes with a great price as well so however the holy spirit will teach you all things another very very important thing that i learned about coming back to god is that you need to be able or to be willing to lose everything in order to gain what god wants for you you need to lose yourself to find yourself in god even the bible says that he who loses he who loses his life will find it in me but he who keeps his life will lose it at the end so you just need to be ready to just lose everything lose your life and let god give you the life that he wants for you it's very difficult but the moment you lay down your life as i've mentioned before it now becomes important to lose everything one thing that i i really struggled with when coming back to god is to lose the life that i wanted but i ended up submitting to his will because you can't fight god you can't fight god and we there are so many things that i wanted to achieve and so many things that i wanted to, to to do according to how i had planned them before what i wanted to study what i wanted to become but i had to lay it all down i had to lose my vision in order to carry the vision of god he, he gave me a new vision which was what i wanted but he gave me the vision now aligned to his purpose for my life so you need to be willing to lose everything in order to gain the kingdom of god and whatever you gain from god it's incorruptible whatever you gain from god you don't lose it it's a permanent thing you gain the gift of eternal life whatever provisions will come nobody can take them away from you because you understand where you got them there was a price that was paid for you to get those things and that is what i came to learn and another important thing that i learned was you need to rely on the holy spirit the bible says lean not on your own understanding however when the spirit of truth comes he will teach you all things so everything that you learn when you come back to god everything that you don't understand all the questions i had the holy spirit taught me all things the holy spirit helped me understand the mind of the father that's another important thing that you need to note that the holy spirit will help you you are not alone the bible says i'm not leaving you alone but i'm leaving you with a helper i'm leaving you with a counselor i'm leaving you with your comforter the holy spirit will always help you thank you so much for watching this video till this far i will see you on our next video stay blessed stay strong and stay healthy